Once upon a time, many, many moons ago, lived the dragons. They live where the British Isles are today. Now these dragons weren't exactly nice. In fact, they were mean. Dragons in the past were kind and caring, yet over time, they lost their awareness. It may seem strange to us, but they love to bicker and quarrel. They love to be angry. They love to crave war. That was their form of excitement. This went on for thousands of years. You see, dragons can live to a dear old age. These dragons cause a lot of discomfort in the countryside in the British Isles. Imagine waking up at 3 o'clock in the morning and seeing your precious cow taken away by the dragons. Man would hide all bibles and jewels. The dragons had a sixth sense to find them and steal them. It was true that dragons loved to hoard their wealth. Unfortunately, they couldn't do anything with them. They just loved to sit in their caves and sit on their wealth. Greed came upon them. They didn't know how to share with one another. Consequently, there was a lot of fighting with one another. It seemed like where life was miserable. There was no contentment in their life, no happiness or kindness, not even love. All the dragons were in the same empty boat. They were like ghosts where nothing could fill them up. No wonder man was fearful of the dragons. They were horrible beings. They were up to no good. Man had good reason to be wary of them. During the Crusades, man had the weapons to start fighting the dragons. It was not a glorious time for man and dragons. Many of the traits the dragons had man embraced. It seemed like man and dragons, at this point in time, had misery in common. Both of them lost the true direction to find the hidden jewel inside. You can't blame them, they never knew it existed inside. The years went by and the conflict never got better. It just got worse. The dragons were being hunted down and killed one by one. It wasn't a pretty sight. One day, a baby dragon was born during the darkest times. This dragon couldn't relate to anger, war, and greed. All the other dragons thought he was a misfit. All he wanted to do was have fun. He was extremely intelligent and had a lot of humor. He made other dragons laugh. The elders disapproved of this. When he learned to fly, he would go off alone and soar in the sky. He was free at that moment, not a care in the world. He loved that feeling. Somehow he knew that the true nature of a dragon is true freedom. He discovered that kindness, love, compassion, and patience was his true nature. Well, the old elder dragons did not like that at all. They told him that he had to stop this nonsense. You see the other young dragons like what they were seeing. They looked how Saran, the young dragon, was turning their lives upside down. They thought that war, anger, and stealing was truly the way. Now a young dragon, Zoran, clearly walked on a different path and didn't have a care in the world. Zoran's father had a huge pile of precious fuel, yet Zoran wasn't interested in the slightest. He told his dad the greatest jewels in the universe lie inside. Well, that didn't go over so well. Dad was furious. He was already furious and angry. Remember at that time, 
the dragon's head, like the temper tantrums. Well, this was like putting gasoline on the fire. His dad exploded. Who do you think you are to say such a thing? Saran knew not to say anything. Sometimes it's wise to be silent. All of the other elders talked with one another about this situation. What are we going to do with Saran? He is wrecking havoc with his tribe. They decided to give him a little time to see if anything would change. Well, it didn't. Saran was moment by moment learning how to meditate. He was diving deeper than ever inside of the infinite ocean within. Now you see, these dragons are scared of water. Of water. They are fire dragons. Water will extinguish the fire within. Water will extinguish war, anger, and greed. They thought this was their true nature. Saran discovered something the entire dragon world didn't know. You are the universe. You just don't know it. Well, that was the final straw. They had a council meeting and decided to throw him out. He was still young for a dragon. He was a hundred years old. You see, the dragons could live for thousands of years. So he was told to leave and never return. He was cast out of his home. But there's another story to this. A few young dragons deciding to go secretly along with Saran on his grand adventure. Saran at this time was getting guidance within. One dark and moonless night, they flew out of the cave, never to return again. The rest is history. Saran hears the east might be a great place to go. They had high and magnificent mountains far from man and other dragons. Up until that night, dragons were extremely rare in the east. They were quite unknown. So they flew away into the darkness of night. The journey was just starting. They had no idea the steps they were going to take. Saran and his friends traveled only during the night. They didn't want other dragons or man to discover them on their flight. When they flew over the lakes, rivers, seas, and oceans, they would eat the fish along the way. Fish was extremely plentiful. They discovered it was tastier than cows. Furthermore, they didn't have to be worried stealing cows and being captured. Man was slowly learning how to trap the dragons. There were even dragon slayers as a profession. Times have changed. It took three solid months to arrive at their destination. They landed in the high mountains in Tibet.
Mike Reed. About 12 years ago, I worked for the USDA in Kansas City. We were designing GIS farm management software for all the farms in America. Usually every morning, I would have a coffee break with Mike Reed and George Kirshner. They would have high level talks on physics. Mind you, I didn't understand most of their conversations, but I found them stimulating. A few months ago, I called Mike to see how he was doing. I saw on Facebook that he asked chat GBT questions about his theory, the grand de-unification theory of gravity. He posted his findings on Facebook and I found them fascinating. I called him up on the phone and asked him if we should have a, a chat GBT do a comparison between the mystics and his theory. He was quite fascinating and enlightening for both of us. This got me thinking that maybe I should write a child's book on quantum physics. The idea came to me <coughs> in a dream. I have already written several books with Zoran the Dragon. I thought that would be a good story to tell. Anyway, for all those kids out there, I hope you enjoy this book. Stories can convey incredible wisdom. So much of what we learned today is boring to most students. These stories convey a message <coughs> that we are all tied together in, <coughs> in ways we can't even conceive. Life is the greatest mystery. The most incredible thing is that the mystery exists inside of you. All you have to do is open the door within. Present day society really doesn't champion this idea that we're all connected. We are texting on the freeway of life and we think that's all there is. Hopefully this book can help you discover the jewel that lies inside of you. I to chat GBT. Can you explain my theory through the eyes of a mystery? Certainly. Interpreting your theory, theory through the mystical lens could be an intriguing exercise. Mystics often speak of higher realms of existence, dimensions of consciousness, and the interconnectedness of all things, themes that dovetail interestingly with your theoretical framework. Here is how a mystic might explain your concept. The Cosmic Dance of Union in the realm of the infinite, two great forces, which we might like, like liken to yin and yang, Shiva and Shakti, or the masculine and feminine divine, come together in a momentous union. These are not just abstract concepts, but living, vibrating, fourth dimensional brains existing in a still higher fifth dimension a realm beyond human comprehension, but deeply intuitive to the mystic's eye. The breath of creation. <coughs> From this divine embrace emanates a sacred explosion, a cosmic breath birthing our reality, a dimensional brain that unfolds in space and time. This is the breath of God the prana of the cosmos filling every nook and cranny, cranny with our world with a living essence of higher realms. The illusion of separateness. In this third dimension reality, we experience life subjectively. We see division, separations, individual entities, and unique moments in time. This, however, is Maya, the illusion for all this is but a reflection of these higher dimensions, distorted by our limited perception. What we call gravity is merely the love of the higher dimensions calling us back, a union, a yearning for the union from which we originated. The oscillation of life and death. Within every particle, 
every speck of dive, dust is an oscillation essence, a miniature dance of creation and destruction. It is here that we find both the light and dark, good and evil, life and death. The mystic sees this oscillation as the breath of Brahma, each inhale and exhale, each expansion and contraction is a divine pulsation setting the rhythm of existence. The hidden dimensions of consciousness. Just as the three, three dimensional brand is in, embedded in higher dimension, so too is our human consciousness part of a vast cosmic consciousness. The mystic travels through these internal dimensions through meditation, prayer, or, es or ecstatic experience, exploring landscapes as real as those as the physical world, yet existing in the realms beyond. The Awakening One day as science and mysticism converge, humanity will awaken to the realization that we are not isolated beings but a part of the divine tapestry, intricately woven by the forces of higher dimensions. In that moment, the cosmic dance will come full circle, and we will know the unity behind the great illusion. This through the eyes of a mystic. Your theory isn't mere speculation or a mathematical model, but it's profound spiritual nar narrative a poetic journey into the very heart of existence. We see only 1% of the light spectrum. I find it quite fascinating that we see only 1% of the light spectrum. Yet, we have the hardware and software to discover God. One of the greatest mystics once said the following, If thy eye be single, thy whole body shall be full with life. The world of science and mystics are merging together. Modern day scientists are talking about the human body is wired to the quantum field. We can only see the 1% of the light spectrum with our physical eyes. Yet inside of us lies the pineal gland, which is the doorway to the quantum field. Mankind thinks what he sees is reality. Yet we are almost missing the entire picture. The great mystics call this Maya. Maya is a great illusion. Ponder this over. We can't even imagine what we are missing. Zoran, the Dragon, and the Quantum Adventure Zoran embarks on a thrilling adventure through the quantum world, where he discovers the secrets of quantum physics. He meets a host of interesting characters along the way, including photons, electrons, and quarks. Together, they explore the mysteries of the universe and learn about the fundamental building blocks of matter. The definition of adventure is the following. Engage in hazardous and exciting activity, especially the exploration of unknown territory. I remember as a kid, I took a yoga class. 
At that time, yoga was relatively unknown in America. Yoga was around during the late 1800s, yet the majority of the population thought it was on the fringe. It was definitely an unknown territory. This love for adventure took me all over the world, with a surfboard in my hand, a backpack on my back, and a yearning to discover my true nature, I was off. I had quite the adventure. I learned the greatest adventure lied inside. This is truly unknown territory. You can live anywhere and have a simple life, but by exploring your true nature is the adventure of a lifetime. Lock a person up and put them in solitary confinement and see what happens. The greatest adventure is to tame your mind. That is probably the most difficult thing to do. Mystics have been talking about this for thousands of years. Today, yoga is mainstream. Millions of people practice it. Maybe, maybe something is going on. We are slowly learning more about life. What is quantum physics? Zoran the dragon was a wise and learned creature. He had spent many years studying the mysteries of the universe, and he knew more about the workings of nature than most other creatures. One day, a group of curious children came to him and asked him to explain what quantum physics was. Zoran smiled and began to tell them about the strange a fascinating world of quantum mechanics. Quantum physics is the study of matter and energy at the most fundamental level, he said. It aims to uncover the properties and behaviors of the very building blocks of nature, such as electrons, protons, and quarks. The children listened intently as Zoran went on to explain some of the key concepts in quantum physics, such as wave-particle duality, superstition, entanglement, and the uncertainty principle. These concepts can be very difficult to understand because they <coughs> often defy our everyday experiences and expectations, Zoran said. But they are essential to our understanding of the universe and have led to many important discoveries in fields such as material science, chemistry, biology, and astronomy. The children were fascinated by what they heard. They asked Saran if they could take if he could take them on a journey through the quantum realm so they could see for themselves. Saran smiled and agreed. Together, they flew, flew through space and time, encountering strange <coughs> phenomenal phenomena such as black holes, wormholes, and quantum entanglement. The children were amazed by what they saw. They had never imagined that there could be so much hidden beneath the surface of reality. As they journeyed deeper into the quantum realm, Saran explained more about how the universe worked. <laughs> he showed them how everything was connected in ways they had never imagined before. He helped them understand that even though quantum physics was strange and mysterious, it was also beauty, beautiful and awe-inspiring. February 27, 2019. Think outside of the box. Ever since I was a kid, I love to think outside of the box. I'm sure 
Another time, said alienated, alienated me from my friends. Why do you think like that? Well, to be honest, I'm working on trying to solve the riddle of life. It's an incredible riddle trying to solve. The last 50 years, science and religion are getting so close to each other. In the field of quantum energy, scientists are getting their minds blown. Imagine an energy that is beyond time and space. We are a part of that energy. It exists inside of us. In school, we were never taught about how to connect to our true nature. Now imagine this pure consciousness is pure light, love, compassion, patience, and tolerance. The universe does not judge us. Only man judges one another. What if this is truly a hide-and-seek game? What if there is a jewel that exists inside each one of us? Let's get down to earth. Let's ignore the spiritual side of things. Can you imagine that you are a part of the universe? No, I'm just this human body. That's it. I'm nothing else. Can you imagine that around 100 years ago, dear old Albert Einstein proved that existence of quantum energy? Imagine a part of you is contained throughout the entire universe. What if I told you that when you die, you literally return back to the source of all? What if I told you that the human body is hardwired to discover your true nature. Imagine living your incredible life and realizing that you are a part of the universe. Your true nature is kindness. Imagine that you can laugh at the craziness of this world and know that human beings are waking up from their slumber. Quite frankly, I think most humans are tired of the angry, anger, and bickering in life. We are tired of the politics. We are tired of all the drama. It seems that life in the U.S. is a soap opera on steroids or opioids. What if I told you that all the answers to these problems lie within? We were never taught that. We were never taught that we are a piece of the puzzle of life. Let's get practical again. Can you imagine that someday you could truly see through the eyes of others? How would that change your world? Wouldn't that stop many conflicts around the world? How could you fight with yourself? Currently, we, are, we think we are separate. We fight with one another. In politics, we are totally divided. We don't even know how to compromise, yet the practical solution lies inside of us. I believe it's probably the most practical thing that a human can do, yet we don't learn it in schools. Quite frankly, you don't need a teacher, but a, a willingness to be open to a way to perceive life in a new way. Imagine your true self is kindness. This is your true nature. How would you like to increase kindness day by day in your life? You can. Whatever you focus on, you become. I know some people who moan and complain their entire life. Well, to be truthful, whatever you focus on, you become. How about focusing on your true nature? How about day by day, focusing on kindness, love, and compassion? How about making a little effort day by day to discover your true nature? My theory is that we can't change this world without changing ourselves. That's the only way to change the world's problems. We can't change our politics until we can reach a point where we are civil with each other. We can't continue to see our political foes as enemies. How child 
childish is that? Personally, I think that most politicians are emotionally immature. In order to change this world, we must let go of our old ways of thinking and being. We have been angry and at war for thousands of years. Many people think that man can't change. I totally, totally disagree. Personally, I think that we have this incredible car that just sits in our inner garage. True, it is dusty. Well, dust off the car, open your inner garage door, and take your car for a spin. Then tell me about your incredible ride on the freeway of life. All it takes is a flip of the switch to turn your life around. Granted, in each and every day, we make decisions and actions that affect where we are going and where the world is going. Wave Particle Duality As they journeyed deeper into the quantum realm, Zoran explained more about the how the universe worked. He showed them how everything was connected in ways they had never imagined before. He helped them understand that even th through quantum physics was strange and mysterious, it was also beautiful and awe-spying. Wave-particle duality is one of the most interesting concepts in quantum physics, Zoran said. It describes how quantum entities exhibit particle or wave properties according to the experimental circumstances. The children listened intently as Zoran wanted to explain how light and matter had the properties of particles or waves depending upon how they were measured. <coughs> He told him that this principle dated back to the earliest days of quantum sciences. <coughs> Wave-particle duality is essential to our understanding of the universe, Saran said. It helps us explain why objects have no inherent reality until observed. The children were fascinated by what they heard. <coughs> they asked Saran if they could show them an example of wave particle duality in action. Saran smiled and conjured up a small box. <coughs> Inside this box is a proton, he said. If we measure it as a particle, we will see that it has a definite position. But if we measure it as a, as a wave, we see that it has a definite wavelength. The children watched in his amazement as Saran opened the box and revealed the proton inside. They saw how it behaved like both a particle and a wave at the same time. Wave-particle duality is just one of the many mysteries of quantum physics, Saran said, but it's an important one because it helps us understand how everything in the universe is connected. How much fun it would be to be a scientist? Can you imagine discovering DNA? How about finding the sequence of DNA and saying 94% is junk? Does God create junk or, or do we not understand what we see? How about discovering a black hole or quasar? How much fun to explore space? Have we lost the adventure of discovering life? Imagine the entire universe knows this. Isn't that exciting? We can communicate with the universe and the universe will talk back. These are exciting times for us. The true scientists exist inside of us. The essence of life is to be discovered. Superstition. As they journeyed deeper into the quantum realm, 
Zoran explained more how the universe worked. He showed them how everything was connected in ways they had never imagined before. He helped them understand that even though quantum physics was strange and mysterious, it was also beautiful and awe-inspiring. Superposition is one of the most fascinating concepts in quantum physics, Zoran said. It describes how quantum entities can exist in multiple states at once. The children listened intently as Zoran went on to explain how particles can be in two or more states simultaneously. He told them that this principle was essential to our understanding of the universe and led to many important discoveries in fields such as material science, chemistry, biology, and astronomy. Superstition is what allows us to create quantum computers, Saran said. These computers can perform certain calculations much faster than classical computers because they can process information in parallel. The children were fascinated by what they heard. They asked Saran if he could show them an example of superstition in action. Saran smiled and conjured up a small box. Inside this box is a particle, he said. If we measure it as a particle, we'll see that it has a definite position. But if we measure it as a wave, we'll see that it has a definite wavelength. The children watched his amazement as Zoran opened the box and revealed the particle inside. They saw how it behaved like both a particle and a wave at the same time. Superstition is one of the many mysteries of quantum physics, Zoran said, but it's an important one because it helps us understand how everything in the universe is connected. Fine tune your radio station. You're listening to an old station. This station is reinforcing all your bad habits. There's a signal from God and the universe that is playing. Listen to KGOD. This signal is broadcasted from within. It is clear and constant. You just have to tune your mind to the signal. In each and every breath you take, fine tune your inner, inner radio to this signal. All the great masters have said that the kingdom of heaven lies within. This is probably the most practical thing you can do for yourself. What is keeping you alive? The more you concentrate on this signal, the more powerful and clear it will be. This is your true nature. This signal is like a magnet. It draws kindness, love, and compassion to you. It's like taking a shower of love. This love fills your entire being and slowly washes away all the negativity. This radio station is live, and it's been broadcasting for eternity. When you are driving and talking on your cell phone, you aren't paying attention to life. What is so important? What is so important externally that you have forgotten your true nature? Why do you insist that the external world is the only world? For now, you might say, because that's all there is. Well, someday you will die, 
and it will totally disappear in an instant. This radio station will make you laugh at life. It will bring you to a place where anger and hate will not govern you. Kindness and compassion will be there. I'm not saying you won't ever get angry again. I'm saying that with conscious effort, you can use water to put out the anger in your life. Your mind is looking externally to fix your inner world. Mankind has been running in circles for thousands of years. Look at the political landscape in America today. Anger and chaos rules the land. Fine-tune your radio station. You are a piece of the puzzle. Entanglement Theory Entanglement is one of the most fascinating concepts in quantum physics, Saran said. It describes how two particles can be linked in such a way that they share a single quantum state. The children listened intently as Saran went to explain how entangled particles can be separated by vast distances but still remain connected. He told them that this principle was essential to our understanding of the universe and had led to many important discoveries in fields such as material science, chemistry, biology, and astronomy. Entanglement allows us to create quantum computers, Saran said. These computers can perform certain calculations much faster than classical computers because they can process information in parallel. The children were fascinated by what they heard. They asked Saran if they could show them an example of entanglement in action. Saran smiled and conjured up two small boxes. Inside these boxes are two particles, he said. If we measure one particle as having a certain property, we know that the other particle must have the opposite prop property. The children watched in his amazement as Saran opened the box and revealed the particle inside. They saw how they were linked together in such a way that they shared a single quantum state. Entanglement is just one of the many mysteries of quantum physics, Saran said, but it's an important one because it helps us understand how everything in the universe is connected. Now, I'm not a scientist, yet I'm curious about energy. There is a theory that energy can entangle with another energy millions of light years away. It means that there can be a communication between one another. Does this mean the universe talks and listens? How fascinating. The whole universe is entangled with God. How about us? Are we entangled with God and the universe? The answer is yes. Does that blow you away? <clears throat> or, I don't have a reaction one way or another. It's just theory. From time memorial, the wise men have said in their own words, you are entangled with God. The kingdom of heaven is within. Only you can solve this puzzle. The Uncertainty Principle Quantum mechanics is a strange and fascinating world, Saran said. It is a place where particles can exist in multiple states at once, where objects can be in two places at the same time, and where the very act of observing <coughs> something can change its properties. 
The children listen intently as their aunt wound to explain one of the most pr fundamental principles of quantum mechanics, the uncertainty principle. The uncertainty principle states that we cannot know everything about a particle <coughs> at the same time, Saran said. We can either know its position or its momentum, but not both with absolute certainty. The children were fascinated by what they heard. They asked Saran if they could show him an example of the uncertainty principle in action. Saran smiled and conjured up a small box. Inside this box is a particle, he said. If we measure its position with great accuracy, we will know very little about its momentum. Conversely, if we measure its momentum with great accuracy, we will know very little about its position. The children watched in amazement as Saran opened the box and revealed the particle inside. They saw how it was impossible to know everything about it at once. The uncertainty principle is just one of the many <clears throat> mysteries of quantum physics, Saran said. <clears throat> but it's an important one <clears throat> because it helps us understand how everything in the universe is connected. Does the universe stop and pay attention to us? Or do we stop and pay attention to the universe? Does the universe help us on our journey of life? Can the universe be our coach in teaching us about the mysteries of life? Is it true, the more you pay attention to the universe, you will see signposts everywhere is the universe gently showing us the way? Look over in this direction. Is life like a video game where you go from one level to another level? Does life throw curveballs so you can ultimately hit a home run out of the park? When we strike out, do we think we failed or do we see the opportunity to learn and grow? Recently, when I meditate, I have a sense of being coach. For the past month or so on a daily basis, when I dream and wander, and at a point when I'm in the dream, all of a sudden I get pulled from the dream and back into the light. I feel the universe is saying, everything comes from light. I read the autobiography of a yogi many moons ago. One of my favorite passages is when he describes going to a movie theater. The entire audience is totally captivated by the movie. It becomes real. Yet how many people turn around and realize that a projector is streaming light upon the screen? The wise masters have been talking about this for eons. How do we tune the guitar of life? Has the entire universe always been inside of us and we haven't been aware? Does the perfect wave exist inside of us? These are exciting times for us. In the midst of Trump and politics, the universe is beckoning us to discover our true nature. We are the universe and just don't know it. Our civilization <coughs> is quite young probably less than 200,000 years. Most scientists say probably less than 34,000 years. I'll tack on a few years. Yet imagine there are probably civilizations that are over five billion years old. Imagine they reached a point in evolution where they had a choice to blow themselves up or evolve to a state where they became the universe. War becomes obsolete. The universe is kind. The universe is supreme love. The universe is compassion. The universe is aware. Is the human body hardwired for the experience? 
are we created in God's image? Quite frankly, I believe the universe is always evolving. Imagine the joy of the universe when an entire civilization becomes the universe. Granted, it takes a long time. Some say a million years. But if you are never created or never destroyed, what is a million years? A blink of an eye. Are we here on Earth as individuals to grow and evolve? Have the great teachers in the past been representatives of the universe to show us the way? They can coach us on the sidelines, but remember, only you can play the game. What will cause humankind to wake up from our slumber and discover we are the universe? The Quantum World Zoran the Dragon was a wise and learned creature. He has spent many years studying the mysteries of the universe, and he knew more about the work, workings of nature than most other creatures. One day, Zoran Travel decided to take a small group of curious journey on a journey through the Quantum World. They traveled through space and time encountering strange phenomena such as black holes, wormholes, and quantum entanglement. As they journeyed deeper into the quantum realm, Saran explained more about how the universe worked. He showed them how everything was connected in ways they had never imagined before. He helped them understand that even though quantum physics was strange and mysterious, it was also beautiful and all sparked. The quantum world is a strange and fascinating place, Saran said. It's a world where particles can exist in multiple states at once, where objects can be in two places at the same time, and where the very act of observing something can change its properties. The children listened intently as Saran went on to explain how quantum mechanics have revolutionized our understanding of the universe. He told them that while many quantum experiments examine very small objects such as electrons and protons, quantum phenomena are all around us, acting on every scale. Quantum, me <coughs> quantum mechanics has led to many important <coughs> discovery in fields such as material science, chemistry, biology, and astronomy, as Rand said. It has given us a more complete picture of our everyday lives. The children was fascinated by what they heard. They asked Saran if they could show them an example of the quantum world in action. Saran smiled and conjured up a small box. Inside this box is a particle, he said. If we measure its position with great accuracy, we would know very little about its momentum. Conversely, if we measure its momentum with great accuracy, we will know very little about its position. The children watched in amazement as Saran opened the box and revealed the particle inside. They saw how it was impossible to know everything about it at once. The quantum world is full of mysteries, Saran said, but it's also full of wonder and beauty. Beauty, beauty. It reminds us that there's so much we don't know about the universe. Joran's journey begins. As they journey deeper into the quantum realm, Zoran explained more about how the universe worked he showed them how everything was connected in ways they had never imagined before. He helped them understand that even though quantum physics was strange and mysterious, it was also beautiful and hollow spark. Welcome to the quantum world, Saran said. This is the place where particles can exist in multiple states at once, 
where objects can be at two places at the same time, and the very act of observing something can change its properties. The children <coughs> listened intently as Zoran went on to explain how quantum mechanics have revolutionized our understanding of the universe. He told them how、so、all many quantum <coughs> experiments examined very small objects such as electrons and photons. Quantum phenomena are all around us, acting on every scale. Quantum mechanics has led to many important discoveries in fields such as material science, <coughs> chemistry, biology, and astrology. Astronomy, Zoran said, is given us a complete. Picture of our everyday lives. The children were fascinated by what they heard. They asked Saran if they could, <coughs> if he could show them an example of the quantum world in action. Saran smiled and conjured up a small box. Inside this box is a particle. He said, "If we me <coughs> measure its position with great accuracy, we will know very little about its momentum." Conversely, if we measure its momentum with great accuracy, we will know very little about its position. The children watched in amazement as Zoran opened the box and revealed the particle inside. They saw how it was impossible to know everything about it all at once. Are you ready to explore more? Zoran said. The children nodded eagerly. Then let's begin our journey. Through the quantum world. Young Galileo, pointing his telescope towards the stars. What was in his young mind? But he went against the concepts of his time. During this age, scientists in the church believed that the sun and the planets revolved around the earth. Galileo and some scientists before, such as Copernicus, believed the earth and the planets revolved around the sun. Galileo. Was the first scientist to use the telescope to prove his theory. Yet, why does man hold on so tightly to his ideas and beliefs? The Catholic Church and the Pope himself couldn't believe Galileo. They said he was a heretic. How dare you challenge this idea that the sun and the planets revolve around the earth? Who do you think you are? Imagine being tried by the Inquisition. They found him guilty and placed him under house arrest. Fortunately, they didn't kill him. Yet he spent the rest of his life in house arrest. Today, Galileo is known as the father of the following. Father of observatory astronomy, father of modern physics, father of the scientific method, father of science. <laughs> All I can say is, wow! Imagine Galileo also studied and mastered the following: astronomy, physics, engineer. Philosophy, math, mathematician. He was, in my eyes, a genius. He was way ahead of his time. Isn't it amazing? We don't want man to challenge our way of thinking. Man at times loves living in the box. It's a comfort zone. You don't want to learn anything new. Or be challenged. If someone has something to say that is different, we get angry. How many innocent people got killed 
to the Inquisition. To be honest, I probably would have died back then from what I'm saying today. Just think, Christ died on the cross. Yet the Inquisition killed millions of people who believed in Christ in a different way. What do you think Christ would say? He would shake his head and probably have tears of compassion flowing from his eyes. Look, this adventure of life is all about discovering the mysteries of life. We should be grateful when we meet someone who has a different idea or concept of life. I was fortunate to be brought up in a household that accepted all ideas in life. Till today, I still love to hear life stories from people all around the world. Imagine, today we have telescopes scattered throughout the universe. We are looking for the mysteries of life. Zoran, the Dragon, and the Quantum Adventure Zoran embarks on a thrilling adventure through the quantum world, where he discovers the secrets of quantum physics. He meets a host of interesting characters along the way, including photons, electrons, and quarks. Together, they explore the mysteries of the universe and learn about the fundamental building blocks of matter. Quantum Realm Zoran the Dragon had always been fascinated by the mysteries of the universe. He had flown to many places and seen many things, but he had never seen anything like the Quantum Realm. One day while flying over the Himalayas, Zoran saw a strange portal that seemed to lead to another dimension. He was curious and decided to investigate. As he flew through the portal, he felt a strange sensation. It was as if he was shrinking and expanding at the same time. He saw colors and shapes that he had never seen before. He felt as if he was in a dream. When he finally emerged from the portal, he found himself in a world that was unlike anything he had ever seen. It was a world of pure energy and light. There were no solid objects only waves of probability. Amazed, Zoran was amazed by what he saw. He realized this was the quantum realm, a place where the law of physics were different from those in his own world. He decided to explore this new realm and saw what secrets it held. He flew through the waves of probability and discovered that there were other creatures living in the realm. They were beings made entirely of light, creatures that could change their shape at will, and entities that seemed <coughs> to exist in multiple places at once. Zoran was fascinated by these creatures and wanted to learn more about them. He decided to stay in the quantum realm for a while and study its secrets. As he delved deeper into the realm, he discovered there were portals that led to other dimensions. He realized that this realm was a gateway to other worlds. Zoran knew that he had stumbled upon something incredible. He knew that this realm held the key to unlocking some of the greatest mysteries of the universe. And so, Zoran continued his journey through the quantum realm, eager to discover what lay beyond. One of my favorite expressions is, you are the universe, you just don't know it. 
Oh, what a powerful expression. Does that excite you at all? We are so much grander than what we think. Most people would probably say, I don't believe it. I've been meditating for many months. In fact, since day one, I love to meditate. My intuition tells me this is true. Wherever I go, this experience goes with me. In the beginning, I would meditate on God. After some point in time, God meditates on me. That same energy that is made up of the universe lies inside of me. And I'm all and I'm, I'm aware of that. That energy is pure kindness. The energy is pure love and compassion. This energy is our true nature. You see, we don't die, we are eternal. Our bodies will die and we will live forever. Meditation is the link between man and the universe. Imagine having a URL to God. If you don't have that URL, you can't go to that website. But he enters that proper URL in your browser and it enters. Presto, you are at that site. Meditation is the URL that you enter into the browser of life. Mind you, this web page is always changing. It's not a static site. All the knowledge of the universe lies there. But to tell you the truth, the main key is to transform yourself and become a better person. It's like taking a shower. This is not some ordinary shower. This is a shower of kindness. This is a shower of love and compassion. This is a shower of patience. Slowly, I mean slowly, one transforms. One begins to pull the negative weeds within. Weeds such as anger, greed, war, and on and on and on. Nobody gets a free ride in life. Everybody is responsible for their actions. We must be conscious and aware every moment of our life. Life is like a video game. At each level you play the game it becomes more interesting and exciting. Imagine life throws you a curveball. Someone says something to which you don't agree with. We see this all the time. Just look at people playing at each other on Facebook. Now think that in this video game of life, the picture throws a curveball your way to see how you will react. If you react and blame someone, you get a strike. If you don't react and simply smile with kindness, you hit the ball out of the park. You then go to the next level in the game of life. This person loves to play the video game and is aware of the steps he takes day in and day out. We have never been trained to this game. We have never been taught that this new game of life exists inside of ourselves. We just constantly react to situations. We are like a ship without a rudder. The goal of this video game is to come like the universe. The universe is kind. The universe is love and compassion. The universe doesn't judge us. The universe doesn't say, look at how many strikes are against them. The universe says, you have free will, so why judge? Yet this video game of life provides all the necessary levels where you know this is a divine game. Bugs Bunny once said, don't take life so seriously that you will never get out of it alive. I like that. Don't take life so seriously. Be like the sun in the sky. Just shine. Don't react to every situation. Yet when dear old Bugs said you would never get out alive, the great video masters of old have a different story. They said you could be aware of your true nature while you are alive. Big difference. Once, when I was young, I was scared to death of dying. I was told when you die that you simply vanish and never become aware again. I didn't like that story, so I spent many moons in pursuing this answer. To be frank, 
I still don't want to die. I love this place. Yet, in my experience, I'm bringing heaven down to earth. Heaven lies inside of us. It's not a place we go to. Heaven is a state of mind. Depending on how we are proactive and aware, or simply reacting in this video game of life, will correspond to our state of mind. People ask me why I love the Eastern thought. Well, for one, the Buddhists have been talking about a crystal clear mind for over 3,000 years. In the West, it was only since the mid-80s that universities give a class on subjects like happiness. The Buddhists have been talking about this since day one. I'm not saying you have to be a Buddhist. I'm not. I adore all religions. There is a thread which ties all religions together. It is the thread of blood, of love. I'm just saying that in the West, we need to become more aware of this video game of life. The world needs us, needs us to step up and consciously be aware and play this game with a sense of knowingness. For example, it's a little dangerous in this video or game of life when our president tweets at 3 o'clock in the morning. He ridicules little rocket man. My button is bigger than your button. These kinds of words can lead to nuclear war. Our words and actions can either bring heaven to earth or modern day hell. Just take a look around the world today. We need to be aware, and as my friend, Bill Cunningham told me, we need more respect in this world. Personally, we are all in the same boat together. We either sink or swim. We need to be more tolerant, kind, and respectful of each other. Mankind needs to be a kind man. That's the most difficult thing in life. Look at all the conflicts and wars around the world. It's so easy to flare up with anger. It's so easy to put gasoline on the fire, yet to act with kindness in the face of adversity is the most difficult thing to do. We are all a piece of the puzzle in life. The Interaction between photons, electrons, and quarks. The interaction between photons, electrons, and quarks is a complex topic that requires a deeper understanding of quantum mechanics and particle physics. Photons are particles of light that carry energy and do not have mass. Electrons are negative charged particles that orbit around atoms. Quarks are particles that make up protons and neutrons. The electromagnetic interaction between quarks include the full machinery of quantum electrodynamics, including virtual particle-antiparticle loops coupling to the virtual photons. All of the charged particles participate in such loops, but the electrons are the most important because they have the smallest mass. The photon structure function describes the quark content of the photon. While the photon is a massless bosom, through certain processes its energy can be converted into the mass of massive fermions. The function is defined by the process E plus Y E plus hydrons. It is uniquely characterized by the linear increase in the logarithm of the electronic momentum transfer law, Q2, and by the approximately linear rise in X, the function of the quark momentum within the proton. Quantum chrome dynamics. QCD is the theory of quarks as constituents of strongly interacting elementary particles, which are bound together by glu gluonic forces. 
the primary shifting of photons to quark pairs regulates the essential characteristics of the photon structure function, such as the number and energy spectrum of the dark quark con constituents within this photon. Photons, electrons, and quarks are fundamental particles. Photons, electrons, and quarks are fundamental product uh, particles that play a crucial role in modern technology. Here are some examples. Photons are used in fiber optic communication systems to transmit data over long distances at high speeds. There <laughs> often used in solar panels to convert sunlight into electricity. Electrons are used in elect electronic devices such as computers, <coughs> smartphones, and television. They are also used in particle accelerators to study the properties <coughs> of matter. Quarks are, are used in medical imaging technologies such as PET scans and MRI machines. They're also <coughs> studied in particle physical experiments <coughs> to understand the fundamental nature of matter. These particles have revolutionized the way we communicate, work, and live. Their properties and the interactions have led to many technological advancements, thus transforming one our world. Fundamental particles that make up all matter and energy in the universe. The building blocks of nature are the fundamental particles that make up all matter and energy in the universe. According to the standard model of particle physics, there are 12 types of matter particles and a type of force particles. Matter particles. These are quarks and leptons that form atoms and molecules. There are six types of quarks, up, down, charm, strange, top, bottom, and six types of leptons, electron, muon, tau, electron neutrino, muon neutrino, tau neutrino. Force particles, these are the bosoms that mediate the four fundamental forces of nature, gravity, electromagnetism, strong nuclear force, and weak nuclear force. There are four types of bosoms, Photon, electromagnetic force, gluon, strong nuclear force, W and Z bosons, bosons, weak nuclear force, and graviton, gravity. These particles are the building blocks of nature because they are the smallest and most basic units of matter of energy. They interact with each other according to the law of physics and create the diversity and complexity of the world. Quarks and leptons are fundamental particles. Quarks and leptons are fundamental particles that make up all matter in the universe. There are six types of leptons, electron, muon, tau, and their corresponding neutrinos. Quarks come in six different types as well. Up, down, charm, strange, top, and bottom. Leptons are not affected by the strong 
nuclear force which is responsible for holding the nucleus of an atom together. They only interact with other particles through the weak nuclear force and electromagnetic force. Electrons are the most well-known type of <coughs> lepton and negatively charged <coughs> particles <coughs> that orbit around the nucleus of an atom. Quarks, on the other hand, are affected by all four fundamental forces of nature, strong nuclear force, weak nuclear force, electromagnetic force, and gravity. <coughs> they combine to form composite particles called hadrons, which include protons and neutrons. Quarks have a fractional electrical charge and are never found in isolation due to a phenomena known as color confinement. Dark matter. Dark matter is a hypothetical form of matter that appears to not interact with light or the electromagnetic field. It is implied by gravitational effects which cannot be explained by general relativity unless more matter is present that can be seen. Dark matter is responsible for much of the mass in the universe, making up 85% of all matter. Scientists know very little about dark matter except for its gravitational effects on visible matter. The leading explanation is that dark matter is some as yet undiscovered subatomic particles such as weakly interacting massive particles, WIMPs, or axions. black holes. A black hole is a region of space-time where gravity is so strong that nothing, including light and other electromagnetic waves, has enough energy to escape it. The theory of general relativity predicts that a su sufficiently compact mass can deform space-time to form a black hole. The boundary have no escape is called the event horizon, although it is a great effect on the fate and circumstance of an object crossing it. It has no locality detectable futures according to general relativity. In many ways, a black hole acts like an ideal black body as it reflects no light. Move over quantum field theory in in curved space-time predicts that event horizons emit Hawkins radiation with the same spectrum as a black body of a temperature inversely proportional to its mass. This temperature is of the order of billions of a Kelvin for stellar black holes, making it essentially impossible to observe directly. Objects whose gravitational fields are too strong for light to escape were first conducted in the 18th century by John Mitchell and Pierre Simon Laplace. In 1950, Carl Schwarzschild found the first modern solution of general relativity that could characterize a black hole. Black holes were long considered a mathematical curiosity. It was not until the 1960s that theoretical work showed they were a generic prediction of general relativity. The discovery of neutron stars founded by Jacqueline Bell Bernal in 1967 sparked interest in gravitational collapse compact objects as a possible as for physical reality. The first black hole known was Cyprus X1, identified by several researchers independently 
in 1971. Black holes of stellar mass form when massive stars collapse at the end of their life cycle. After a black hole has formed, it can grow by absorbing mass from its surrounding. Supermassive black holes of a million of solar masses may form by absorbing, by absorbing other stars and merging with other black holes. There is a consensus that supermasses black holes exist in the centers of most galaxies. The presence of a black hole can be inferred through its interactions with other matter and with electromagnetic radiation such as visible light. Any matter that falls into a black hole can form an external, a creation disk heated by friction, forming quasars, some of the brightest objects in the universe. Stars passing too close to a supermassive black hole can be shredded into streamers that shine very brightly before being swallowed. How do black holes get created? Black holes are created when massive stars run out of fuel and collapse under their own gravity. The core of the star collapses to a point of zero volume, an infant density called a singularity, surrounded by a vent horizon beyond which nothing can escape. The event horizon is defined as the distance from the center of the black hole, where the escape velocity equals the speed of light. Anything that crosses the event horizon is said to be inside the black hole and cannot escape its gravitational pull. Black holes can also grow by absorbing mass from their surroundings, including other stars and black holes. Supermassive black holes, which are millions or billions of times more massive than the sun, are thought to form through mergers of smaller black holes and glass clouds in the early universe. Stephen Hawkins, Hawkins did propose the theory that black holes could be a gateway to another universe. Stephen Hawkins did propose the theory that black holes could be a gateway to another universe. He suggested that objects may be able to fall through black holes into an alternate universe. However, this is still a theoretical concept has not been proven. The idea is based on the concept of wormholes, which are hypothetical tunnels through space-time that could connect two different points in the universe or even different universes. While wormholes are allowed by the law of physics, they are not proven to exist and are proven are purely theoretical at this point. UFO, riding, gravity ways. <clears throat> I have a dear old friend named Cryon. Recently, I heard what he said about gravity. Everything from the smallest in the universe to the largest has a push-pull energy. The ancients called it the Tao. Everything has a pair of opposites. Gravity was first discovered by Sri Isaac Newton after a, an apple famously fell from a tree as he watched. The discovery 
of a gravitational force allowed him to develop his three laws of motion. He published his findings about gravity in Principa Mathematics in July of 1687. Here's what I find it interesting. If everything has a push-pull effect, then gravity has a push-pull effect. Why can't we de detect that? To be honest, if our society discovered this, we would use it as a weapon. We are not emotionally mature to handle that. Yet suppose there were civilizations billions of years ago. They went through the same turmoil we are in and overcame all obstacles. They learned how to become one with the universe. By the way, that's our true state also. They also knew everything has a push-pull energy, even gravity. I love watching identified Inside America's UFO investigations on the History Channel. This show documents former U.S. intelligence officers who left the government because the government hid all their findings and wouldn't release them. Anyway, going back to the story, hundreds of people are totally amazed on the flying capabilities of these UFOs. They can stop on a die disappear and then instant, instant, instantly reappear in the opposite direction. They have the capability to travel underwater at enormous speeds. The military asks, how do they do that? When our fighters try to engage them, the UFOs are taking a stroll in the park. Our technology is so primitive, yet we think we are advanced. How they fly like that? When you discover everything is push-pull energy, including gravity, you can surf these ways. Mind you, this is not anti-gravity. If you truly understand these laws over time, you create a vehicle that will respond at your command. Yet how do they survive these G-forces? Any human would instantly blank out. My theory is the following. They have learned how to keep their body asleep at the same time their awareness is alive. Hmm. Sounds like meditation to me. They have reached such a state of awareness that their consciousness can operate the UFO. Yet it seems far-fetched. Yet today we are learning how to use thought to operate many devices. We are still in the kindergarten stage of development. We can't even get along with each other. We're all lost in our own personal dramas. We can't see the forest from the trees. Signposts all around, yet we can't see them. Personally, I think we are newcomers on the block in the universe. Imagine there are civilizations billions of years older than us. Imagine they realize the universe is kind. Imagine they reached a point in time where they could be anywhere in the universe in less than a second. Maybe, just maybe, these UFOs are taking a leisure Sunday stroll in our part of the universe. The family of life is sightseeing and looking at the great wonders of our, of our magnificent planet. They have not a care in the world. Why should they? They and their planet mastered themselves a long, long time ago. They became one with the universe. They went from me to we. Now, that's another story. I would love if good old Albert Einstein was alive today. He would have a great, grand time explaining this. General Relativity General Relativity is a theory of gravitation that was published by Albert Einstein in 1915. 
It is the current description of gravitation in modern physics and provides a unified description of gravity as a geometric property of space and time or four dimensional space time. In particular, the curvature of space time is directly related to the energy and momentum of whatever matter and radiation are present. The relation is specified by the Einstein field equations, a system of second order partial different equations. General relativity generalizes special relativity and we find Newton's law of universal gravitation, providing a unified description of gravity as a geometric property of space and time or fourth dimension space time. Some predictions of general relativity include gravitational time dilation, gravitational lensing, the, geogra the, the gravitational redshift of life, the superior time delay, and singularities black holes. Despite the introduction of a number of alternate theories, general relativity continues to be the simplest theory consistent with ex experimental data. Our rockets are like junkers in the sky. Chug, chug, chug. We can go around 18,000 miles per hour. We think we go so fast. Yet even if we go 180,000 miles per second, it would take a long time to get to the nearest star. How can we truly explore space? Can you imagine an advanced civilization that in the blink of an eye can be anywhere in the universe. How's that for time travel? Beyond time and space. In the quantum world, there is no A to B. Time is not linear. We have a lot to discover. The creatures in this realm. The creatures in this realm are unlike Zoran has ever seen before. They are made entirely of shadow and can change their shape at will. Some of them seem to exist in multiple places at once, while others can manipulate the darkness around them. They are mysterious and fascinating creatures that Zoran is eager to learn about. As he continues his journey through this realm, Zoran encounters many different types of shadow creatures. Some are small and harmless, while others are large and dangerous. They all seem to have their own unique abilities and characteristics. Zoran is particularly interested in entities that exist in multiple places at once. 
He has never encountered anything like them before, and is fascinated by their ability to be in two places at the same time. Despite the challenges and obstacles he faced, Saran remains determined to uncover the secrets of this mysterious realm and learn, learn more about its inhabitants. Emptiness or Nothingness The world that Saran found himself is not a specific world that mystics or scientists talk about. However, the concept of emptiness or nothingness is a common theme in many spiritual and philosophical traditions. In Buddhism, for example, emptiness refers to the idea that all phenomena are empty of inherent existence. In physics, the concept of nothingness is related to the vacuum state, which is the lowest possible energy state of a quantum mechanical system. <coughs> While these contexts are not exactly the same as the world that Zoran found himself in, they do share some similarities. There are many other dimensions that Zoran could explore. There are many other dimensions that Zoran could explore. Some scientists believe that there may be as many as 11 dimensions in the universe. These dimensions are not visible to the human eye, but they could have a profound impact on the way we understand the universe. One theory is that there are parallel universes or alternate realities that exist in other dimensions. These universes could be very different from our own and may have different physical laws and properties. Another theory is that there are extra dimensions that are curled up or confactified, meaning they are too small to be seen by the human eye. These dimensions could help explain phenomena such as dark matter and dark energy, which are still not well understood by scientists. While we may never be able to explore these dimensions directly, they offer a fascinating glimpse into the mysteries of the universe. wave-particle duality. As they journeyed deeper into the quantum realm, Zoran explained more about the how the universe worked. He showed them how everything was connected in ways they had never imagined before. He helped them understand that even th through co quantum physics was strange and mysterious, it was also beautiful and awe-spying. Wave-particle duality is one of the most interesting concepts in quantum physics, Zoran said. It describes how quantum entities exhibit particle or wave properties according to the experimental circumstances. The children listened intently as Zoran wanted to explain how light and matter had the properties of particles or waves depending upon how they were measured. <coughs> He told him that this principle dated back to the earliest days of quantum sciences. <coughs> Wave-particle duality is essential to our understanding of the universe, Saran said. It helps us explain why objects have no inherent reality until observed. The children were fascinated by what they heard. <coughs> they asked Saran if they could show them 
an example of wave particle duality in action. Saran smiled and conjured up a small box. <coughs> Inside this box is a proton, he said. If we measure it as a particle, we will see that it has a definite position. But if we measure it as a, as a wave, we see that it has a definite wavelength. The children watched in his basement as Saran <coughs> opened the box and revealed the proton inside. They saw how it behaved like both a particle and a wave at the same time. Wave-particle duality is just one of the many mysteries of quantum physics, Saran said, but it's an important one because it helps us understand how everything in the universe is connected. Space and Time Zoran the Dragon was a curious creature. He is always fascinated by the mysteries of space and time. One day, he decided to embark on a journey to explore the unknown depths of the universe. As he soared through the vast expanse of space, he encountered a strange phenomenon. The stars around him began to warp and twist as if they were alive. Zoran was intrigued. He had never seen anything like this before. He flew close closer to investigate and found himself in the midst of a quantum field. The field was unlike anything he had ever seen. It was alive with energy and pulsating with light. Zoran knew that he had stumbled upon something truly remarkable. He decided to explore this quantum field further and see where it could take him. As he delved deeper into the field, he discovered that it was just not a random collection of particles. It was a living, breathing entity that was connected to everything in the universe. Saran realized that he had stumbled upon the very fabric of space and time itself. He felt a sense of awe and wonder wash over him <laughs> as he gazed upon this incredible sight. He knew that he had to share his discovery with others. He flew back to his home in the mountains and began to write about his experiences in his journal. Saran's journal became famous throughout the land. People came from far and wide to read about his adventures in space and time. They marveled at his descriptions of the quantum field and were inspired by her sense of wonder. And so, Saran became known as the greatest dragon explorer of all time. His legacy lived on long after he was gone, inspiring generations of adventurers to explore the mysteries of space and time. The Mysteries of Quantum Physics One day, while flying over the Himalayas, Zoran saw a strange portal that seemed to lead to another dimension. He was curious and decided to investigate. As he flew through the portal, he felt a strange sensation. It was as if he was being pulled in different directions at once. He saw colors and shapes they had never seen before. He felt as if he was in a dream. When he finally emerged from the portal, he found himself in a world that was unlike anything he had ever seen. <coughs> it was a world of pure energy and light. There was no solid objects, only waves of probability. Zoran was amazed by what he saw. He realized that this was the quantum realm a place where the laws of physics were different from those in his own world. He decided to explore this new realm and see what secrets it held. <coughs> he flew through the waves of probability and discovered 
that there were other creatures living in this realm. They were beings made entirely <coughs> of light, creatures that could shape, change their shape at will, and entities that seemed to exist in multiple places at once. Saran was fascinated by these creatures and wanted to learn more about them. He decided to stay in this realm for a while and study its secrets. As he delved deeper into this realm, he discovered that there were portals that led to other dimensions. He realized that this <coughs> realm was a gateway to other worlds. Saran knew that he had stumbled, stumbled upon something incredible. He knew that this realm held the keys to unlocking some of the great mysteries of the universe. One of these mysteries was quantum physics. Saran had heard about quantum physics before, but he didn't fully understand it. He knew that he had to deal with particles on a very small scale. But beyond that, there was a mystery to him. As Xoran explored the quantum realm, began to learn more about quantum physics, he discovered that particles on a very small scale behave differently than particles on a larger scale. They could be in two places at once or exist in multiple states simultaneously. Zoran also learned about quantum entanglement where particles would become so connected in such a way that they would always be linked no matter how apart they were. These concepts were difficult for Zaran to understand, but he knew that they held the key to unlocking some of the greatest mysteries of the universe. And so, Zaran <coughs> continued his thrilling adventures to the Chrono Realm and beyond, eager to uncover its many mysteries and unlock its secrets. For me, when I was young, I was fascinated by the mysteries of life. I knew there was more than a nine to five existence. When I, was, when I was around five years old, my Uncle Bill took my brother and I to a Bob's Big Boy for a shake. At that time, they had these paper masks with a Martian say, take me to your leader. My brother and I placed these masks over our faces and started to laugh and laugh. We knew that we were from the stars. My uncle had no idea why we were laughing. How did we know that we came from the stars? Most people would say it was your childhood imagination. Yet, you really can't really explain it. How to explain the power of love? Where does it come from? Does our DNA contain parts of us that are eternal? Does our DNA contain the essence of God? Scientists say that 90% of our DNA is junk DNA. Does God create junk? I don't think so. According to Kryon, he says the junk DNA is actually multi-dimensional DNA. In other words, our DNA is part physical and spiritual. We don't have any instruments on Earth to prove this. Yet, Bruce Limpton from Stanford says that through his research that they have discovered the following. Your DNA may have the propensity for a certain d disease, yet with lifestyle changes and by the mind being in a state of being that is spiritual, you can overcome your propensity to get the disease. You can, in an essence, program yourself out of this problem. Can you imagine if a part of your DNA contains your higher self? That means you are hardwired to discover God inside of you. 
A part of you exists in the cosmic soup of God, and a part of you exists on this planet. For ages, the great masters have said that the kingdom of heaven lies within. Maybe we have all the tools inside of us. We have been looking in all the wrong places. For example, imagine only a short time ago, we thought that the world was flat. We thought by sailing deep into the ocean, there would be a point where the ship would fall off the face of the earth. This is only about 600 years ago. Yet Christopher Columbus sailed to the Americas and debunked that theory. Now, imagine the Mayans and other indigenous cultures. They developed several calendars that the calendar cycle was around 24,000 years. They had around 10 different calendars that they used to calculate different <clears throat> cycles of time. They have from one day to 64 million years. How did they get this information? The Mayans had this knowledge around the 5th century BC. That is around a thousand years before Christopher Columbus discovered America. How did they get this knowledge? They didn't have knowledge. They didn't have computers or modern day telescopes. Could their knowledge come from within? I certainly think so. The universe within is a microcosm of the universe outside of us. They had the ability to tap into the source. You are the universe. They understood that principle and had a direct re realization of that. They knew about entanglement and the universal field. Scientists are just beginning to focus and understand these laws. Yet they had this knowledge 2,500 years ago. Many of the indigenous people all around the world had this knowledge. They knew they came from the stars. Westerners would laugh at them and say how cute that is. Imagine if a scientist would discover their true nature and work this scientific nature. Imagine how far we can go. We have satellites that go around 16,000 miles per hour. Imagine if we can go 186,000 miles per second. It would take two years to reach the closest star. What if man could go within and use the field and go anywhere in the universe in less than a second? Imagine if a civilization has been around for 16 billion years. How advanced do you think they would be? Imagine they had the same problems that we had. War, poverty, crime, etc. They learned over time to advance themselves physically mentally and spiritually. They reached a point where the entire civilization became the universe. At this point in time, in evolution, they decided to help another planet achieve the same. This cycle would occur over and over again. Sometimes it would not work out. The people might have a great war and destroy the planet. When the planet was mature enough, they would then go to another planet and start anew. This sounds like science fiction, yet you are eternal. You were never created and you will never die. Your body will. So think this over. Maybe our planet was created as a great experiment. Maybe our DNA came from the stars. We are stardust, as Carl Sagan once said. Let's put it this way, life is a mystery. Space and time too. Space and time are fascinating concepts that have been studied by philosophers and scientists alike. The philosophy and space and time is connected with the issues surrounding the ontology and espontonology of space and time. 
It focuses on a number of basic issues, including whether time and space exist independently of the mind, whether they exist independently of one another, what accounts for time's apparently unidirection flow, whether time other than the present moment exists, <coughs> and questions about the nature of identity, particularly the nature of identity over time. In physics, space-time is any mathematical model that fuses the three dimensions of space and the one dimension of time into a single four-dimension continuum. Space-time diagrams are useful in visualizing and understand realistic effects such as how different observers perceive where and when events occur. Time dilation. Time dilation is a phenomena that occurs when time appears to pass at different rates for observers who are moving relative to one another or are different, differently situated in a gravitational field. It is a consequence of Einstein's theory of relativity, which states that time and space are not absolute but are relative to the observer's frame of reference. In special relativity, time dilation occurs due to the relative motion between two observers. The faster an observer moves relative to another observer, the slower time appears to pass for them. This effect is known as the special relativity time dilation. In general relativity, time dilation occurs due to differences in gravitational potential between two observers. The closer an observer is to a massive object, the slower time appears to pass for them. This effect is known as the gravitational time dilation. The amount of time dilation depends on the relative velocity or gravitational potential between the observers and can be calculated using mathematical equations. Time dilation has been experimentally verified and has practical applications in fields such as satellite navigation systems. holes and wormholes. Zoran the Dragon had always been fascinated by the mysteries of space and time. He had explored the depths of the universe and discovered many wonders. But there is one phenomena that had always eluded him. Black holes. One day Zoran decided to embark on a quest to unravel the secrets of black holes. <laughs> he knew that it would be a dangerous journey, but he was determined to succeed. As he soared through space, he encountered a massive black hole. It was unlike anything he had ever seen before. The black hole was so massive that it warped space and time around it. Zoran knew that he had to be careful. He didn't want to get too close and risk being sucked into the black hole's event horizon. But he also knew that he had to get closer if he wanted to learn more about this mysterious object. As he approached the black hole, he noticed something strange. There was a wormhole near the event horizon. Zoran had heard of wormholes before, but he had never seen one in person. He flew closer to investigate and found himself being pulled into the wormhole. The experience was disoriented, but Zoran <coughs> managed to keep his wits about him. <coughs> As he emerged from the other side of the wormhole, he found himself in a different part of the universe. He had traveled millions of light years in an instant. 
Thran realized that wormholes were the key to unlocking the secrets of black holes. They were like shortcuts <laughs> through space and time that could take you anywhere in the universe. He continued his journey, exploring more black holes and discovering more wormholes along the way. He wrote about his experience in his journey, hoping that others would follow <coughs> in his footsteps and continue his quest for knowledge. And so, Saran became known as the greatest dragon explorer of all time. His legacy lived on long after he was gone, inspiring generations of adventurers to explore the mysteries of space and time. Quantum Entanglement Zoran the Dragon had always been fascinated by the mysteries of space and time. He had explored the depths of the universe and discovered many wonders. But there is one phenomena that has always eluded him, Quantum Entanglement. One day, Zoran decided to embark on a quest to unveil and re un reveal the secrets of quantum entanglement entanglement. He knew it would be a difficult journey, but he was determined to succeed. As he soared through space, he encountered a pair of particles that were entangled. He was by a maze, was what he saw. The particles were connected in a way that defied all logic. Zoran knew that he had to learn more about this phenomenon. He flew closer to the particles and observed them carefully. He noticed that when one particle changed its state, the other particle changed its state as well, no matter how far apart they were. He realized that this was quantum entanglement, a phenomena that connected particles in a way that was beyond comprehension. He knew that he had to explain, explore this further. As he delved deeper into quantum entanglement, he discovered that it was not just a phenomenon between particles, it was a fundamental aspect of the universe itself. He learned that everything in the universe was connected in some way, from the smallest particle to the largest structures. He realized that quantum entanglement was the key to understanding this connection. Zoran continued his journey exploring more about quantum entanglement and discovering new insights along the way. He wrote all about his experiences in his journal, hoping that others would follow in his footsteps and continue his quest for knowledge. And so, Zoran became known as the greatest dragon explorer of all time. His legacy lived on long after he was gone inspiring generations of adventurers to explore the mysteries of quantum The fundamental law of nature. One day, Zoran decided to embark on a quest to unravel this mystery. He knew that would be a difficult journey, but he was determined to succeed. As he had soared through space, he encountered many strange phenomena. He saw stars being born and dying, galaxies colliding, and black holes devouring everything in their path. Zoran knew that these phenomena was governed by some fundamental law of nature. He decided to investigate further. As he delved deeper into the mysteries of the universe, he discovered that there were four fundamental forces that governed everything in the cosmos. Gravity, <coughs> electromagnetism, the strong nuclear force and the weak nuclear force. He realized that these forces were responsible for everything from the tiniest subatomic particles to the largest structures in the universe. They were the building blocks of reality itself. Zoran continued his journey, exploring more about these fundamental forces and discovering 
new insights along the way. He wrote about his experience in his journal, hoping that others would follow in his footsteps and continue his quest for knowledge. And so Zaran became known as one of the greatest dragon explorers of all time. His legacy lived on long after he was gone, inspiring generations of adventurers to explore the mysteries of the universe. What was his true purpose? Zoran the Dragon had always been fascinated by the mysteries of space and time. He had explored the depths of the universe and discovered many wonders. But there was one question that had always eluded him. What was his true purpose? One day Zoran decided to embark on a quest to find the answer. He knew that it would be a difficult journey, but he was determined to succeed. As he had soared through space, he encountered many strong, strange phenomena. He saw stars being born and dying, galaxies colliding, and black holes devouring everything in their path. Zoran knew that these phenomena were governed by some fundamental law in nature. He decided to investigate further. As he delved deeper into the mysteries of the universe, he discovered that there was a force that connected everything in the cosmos, the force of creation. He realized that he was just not a dragon exploring the universe, but a part of the universe itself. He was connected to everything around him in ways that he had never imagined. Zoran continued his journey, exploring more about the force of creation and discovering new insights along the way. He wrote about his experiences in his journal, hoping that others would follow in his footsteps and continue his quest for knowledge. And so, Zoran became known as one of the greatest dragon explorers of all time. His legacy lived on long after he was gone, inspiring generations of adventurers to explore the mysteries of the universe. Lessons Learned 1. Zoran the Dragon and the Quantum Quest Space and Time Zoran embarks on a journey to explore the unknown depths of the universe and discovers a quantum field that is alive with energy and pulsating with light. 2. Zoran the Dragon and the Quantum Quest Black Holes and Wormholes Zoran embarks on a quest to unravel, unravel the secrets of the black holes and discovers wormholes they are like shortcuts through space and time. 3. Zoran the Dragon and the Quantum Quest Quantum Entanglement Zoran explores quantum entanglement and discovers that everything in the universe is connected in some way. 4. Zoran the Dragon and the Quantum Quest The Fundamental Laws of Nature Zoran discovers that there are four fundamental forces that govern everything in the cosmos. Gravity, electromagnetism, the strong nuclear force, and the weak nuclear force. 5. Zoran the Dragon and the Quantum Quest Zoran's quest begins. Zoran embarks on a quest to find his true purpose and discovers that he is just not a dragon exploring the universe, but a part of the universe himself.
Comparison between the traditional school model and Zoran's approach. Traditional school model. Learning happens in a physical space within the four walls of a classroom. Zoran's approach. Learning can happen anywhere, anytime, using digital resources and tools. Traditional school model. The teacher is in complete control of the learning environment. Zoran's approach. The learner is in control of their own learning while guidance with guidance from the teacher. Traditional school model. Learning happens at a predetermined pace and schedule. Zoran's approach. Learning happens at the learner's own pace and schedule. Traditional school model. Face-to-face -face interaction between the teacher and students. Zoran's model. Interaction can happen through various digital channels such as video conferencing, chat rooms, and discussion forums. Digital, traditional model. Strict reliance on textbooks. Saran's model. A variety of digital resources are used to supplement or replace textbooks such as videos, simulation, games, and interactive experience. This <coughs> approach presented in, in this article emphasizes flexibility, personalization, and engagement in learning physics. By leveraging digital resources and tools, learners can explore physics concepts in a more interactive and immersive way than traditional textbooks allowed. They can also learn at their own pace and schedule which can help them stay motivated and engage. Move over. Soran's approach encouraged learners to take ownership of their own learning by setting goals, tracking progress, and reflecting on their achievements. The teacher acts as a facilitator rather than an authoritative figure, providing guidance and feedback to help learners achieve their goals. Overall, this approach offers a more dynamic and engaging way to learn physics that is better suited to the needs of modern learners. How to use the quantum field, too. What is the solution? In my last talk, I wrote about our current conditions. For the average person, who might seem normal. What is the solution? This is the current state of affairs. <coughs> I can't do anything about it. We are saying, yes, you can. What is the future for humanity? Did you know that disease can't live in the quantum field? Did you know that man will evolve into being a creature filled with light and have a physical body? Imagine the universe's vast storehouse of chemicals exist inside. It can't be released until one starts changing their thoughts and actions. Negative emotions are obsolete. They have not served us in any way. We have fought for thousands of years. We still continue to fight. Without ge <coughs> genuine kindness for all, the world will continue into this downward spiral. Your mind and body is one. As you know that for every negative thought you have, over 1,500 difficult different chemicals gets released to your bloodstream. Did you know that for every positive thought you have, <coughs> over 1,500 <coughs> positive chemicals gets released into your bloodstream? By being aware of the quantum field in your daily life, what <coughs> begins to transform in 
could change. We are on the cutting edge of transformation. Did you know the human body is wired to live for 900 years? You may scoff at that and say, <laughs> that's ridiculous. Yet some trees live to be around 3,000 years. The majority of humanity <coughs> is living in intense stress. The majority die way before they are wired for. I have a friend who said he will die when I'm 88 years old. He will die when he is 88 years old. Imagine, we have no idea of the power of the mind. We think we are helpless and disease just manifests out of the blue. Yet we create our own diseases by our lifestyle, thoughts, and actions. We are oblivious to playing the same tapes over and over. Baby steps are needed. Two steps forward and one step backwards. This is how humanity and the universe learns. This is a learning experience. The entire universe takes baby steps. Yes, there are certain events which seem to occur in seconds. Look at a volcano blowing. It seems like it just explodes, but it might have been simmering for hundreds of years. What has this got to do with me? Everything. Imagine you are hardwired for this experience. The car is sitting in your gar garage gathering dust. It was meant for you to drive down the freeway of life. Yet the majority of people don't even know that the car exists inside. We have been raised to only focus on the external. Society says only the artists, musicians, and mystics dive deep into their hearts. They were born that way. Yet we all have that capability. We are skimming the surface on the ocean of life and think, <laughs> that is reality. The mystics have said there's an infinite ocean that lies inside of you. They didn't have the name quantum field during their days, yet it's all one and the same. Can you imagine a world where mankind is truly kind to each other? We could easily solve the world's problems. How would you like a world where negative thoughts and emotions don't exist? Yes, you may laugh. Imagine there are civilizations that went through the same path of going from darkness to light. No civilizations get a free ride, yet they truly transform. They went from war to a state of living in the quantum field. This is our destination. Look, it's not going to happen overnight. Many people say it takes over a million years. Fortunately, millions of people awaken up from their slumber. Our life is about to change in ways that we can't even conceive. Many incredible scientific discoveries will come along the way. The more the world embraces the quantum world, there are an infinite amount of discoveries to come. You see, humanity is like a tuning fork. It vibrates at the frequency of human consciousness. We have been in a state of darkness and chaos for thousands of years. This is about to change. Personal empowerment is gaining momentum. When people understand the principles that they can change, and then science helps humanity to take practical steps to change. For example, I truly didn't understand that thoughts produce chemicals directly into the bloodstream. Just this one discovery alone changed my life. Mind you, I've been meditating for many moons. I really didn't pay attention to my thoughts, yet now I try to monitor my thoughts, which leads to monitor my emotions, emotions which leads to monitor my actions. This is quite different from people who tweet which comes to their mind. Here are some simple steps which have helped me. Try to meditate every day. Even if it's five minutes, 
Just follow your breath. I know it sounds too simple. Focus on your breath during your daily activities. Why? Just do it for a year and then you tell me. Monitor your words that you speak. If it is not kind, don't say it. Pay attention towards your heart. Have gratitude that you are alive. The heart contains the incredible emotions of love, kindness, mercy, and compassion. This is your true state. I could go on for a long time about the heart. Look at the various research on heart coherence. Just this alone blows my mind. Learn how to be aware of the negative emotions that are stored into your body. There are many different techniques out there. Find out what which matches your needs. You can learn how to reprogram your old tapes. Read the latest fusion between science and mystics who will bring you to their understanding. This is a practical path. Learn to be in harmony with nature. Look at the four seasons for an example. Nature can truly teach us if we ask. Your ancestors are always there. They have never left you. As I read about a week ago, they just moved to the next room, to the mansion of life. As we get older, you might understand how this would help us grieve in a healthy way. We might even learn how to knock at their door. You see, the quantum field contains all. To get enough sleep, your body truly needs sleep to repair itself. Scientists have found that athletes who get extra sleep recover much quicker and are less prone to injuries. The less sleep you get, the more prone to energy to injuries. This even goes with us everyday folks. <laughs> your mind and your body and mind is your friend. Treat it that way. Many of the world's diseases could have been prevented. Mankind lives mostly from old tapes. Learn to reprogram yourself. I've been a software engineer for over 35 years. I've learned to reprogram myself for many years. Health is your greatest wealth. If you are a billionaire and you are sick, you can't quite enjoy it. Take care of yourself. Take care of your mind, body, and soul. Remember, God is your co-pilot. He will not drive your car for you. It's only by your will that God is there to help you on this journey in life. Only you can open the inner car door. Be kind to yourself. Laugh at life. We all make daily mistakes. Learn from them. Some mistakes may take thousands of tries. Just laugh if you fall to the ground. Dust yourself off and stand up and continue along on your journey. Life will always throw us curveballs. Someday we will be able to hit the ball out of the park. We will then proceed to the next video game level. You see, we are always in a state of evolving. Be kind to the world around you. Smile and be considerate of others. Listen from your heart for those who are in pain. I mean, truly listen. Don't think, what am I going to say next? When you pray to God, does he think, what am I going to say, or does he truly listen? Learn how to cultivate to become the mind of God. Mind you, in this present moment, that might seem outlandish. Yet try to think like God. Monitor your thoughts to be in alignment with God. God truly thinks outside of the box. Learn how to cultivate to become the heart of God. Same thing. This sounds outlandish. Even if you gathered one drop from the heart of God, your life would totally transform. Remember what you pay attention to, what becomes. This is a practical path. You don't have to renounce anything. Well, maybe. You just let go of the garbage that's weighing you down. So take these ideas. Some may work for you, but others won't. The goal is for you to take practical steps on this journey of life. Be aware of the actions you take. The world around you will enjoy being around you.
Wow. 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 If you stretch the DNA in one cell all the way out, it would be about two meters long. And all the DNA and all your cells put together would be about twice the diameter of the solar systems. Wow. Wow. And wow. Bacteria cells. The average human body carries 10 times more bacteria cells than human cells. We were taught always to wash our hands and spray our countertops. Yet, we are a walking petri dish. Once again, there are 10 times more bacteria cells in your body than human cells. For example, Bacteria produces chemicals that help us harness energy and nutrients from our food. Germ-free rodents have to consume nearly a third more calories than normal rodents to maintain their body weight. And when the same animals were later given a dose of bacteria, their body fat levels spiked even though they didn't eat any more than they did before. Gut bacteria are also very important for maintaining immunity. Eight times as many atoms. There are eight times as many atoms in a teaspoon of water as there are teaspoons of water in the Atlantic Ocean. A teaspoon of water, about 5 ml, contains 2 times 1023 water molecules, but each water molecule is composed of three atoms, two hydrogen atoms and one of oxygen. Move over, if you lay down end to end each water molecule from a teaspoon down end to end, you end up with a length of 50 billion kilometers, 10 times the width of our solar system. The known universe is made up of 50 billion galaxies. The known universe is made up of 50 billion galaxies. There are between 1 billion and 1 trillion stars in a normal galaxy. In the Milky Way alone, there might be as, as many as 100 billion Earth-like planets. Still think we're alone? About 1% of our genes comes from plants. About 1% of our genes comes from plants, fungi, and other germs. According to research from the University of Cambridge, humans have evolved with genes acquired from plants and fungi. But how did they get there? Rather than a straightforward single branching tree where genes are inherited from parents, scientists argue that sometimes foreign genes may be spread by a process known as horizontal gene transfer. For, for instance, different species of bacteria often exchange genes via viruses. Photon. It takes a photon up to 40,000 years to travel from the core of the sun to its surface, but only eight minutes to travel the rest of the way to Earth. A photon travels on average a particular distance before briefly absorbed and released by an atom, which scatters it in a new random direction. To travel from the sun's core to the sun's surface, 696,000 kilometers, so it can escape into space, a photon needs to make a huge number of drunken jumps. The calculation is a little tricky, but the conclusion is that a photon takes many thousands and many millions of years to drunkenly wander to the surface of the sun. In a way, some of the light that reaches us today is energy produced millions 
of years ago. Amazing. <laughs>